Welcome to this Windows channel and this is the um, review or quick look at the latest build of Redstone 4 of Windows 10. That is of course next uh, version of Windows coming up somewhere in March of 2018. So after two weeks of course we've got a new build that was released and it's build 17035. And this build of course is a uh, build that has quite a few new features that are interesting. So we'll be taking a look at all of that um, slowly, but uh, very, very interesting to uh, see the different little options. And we're starting to see a few interesting things and I have an idea of what direction uh, Microsoft is kind of going with all of this. So first things first, you know, those annoying web pages that you go to and, you know, I'm thinking of, for example, ZDNet or uh, even CNET that have auto playing videos and you just, you know, it's kind of annoying. Well, now when you're in the tab, if you right click on the tab, there's mute tab. Now here, this one is uh, grayed out because this page doesn't play audio. But if you have automatic audio playing, you'll be able to click mute tab. And so it's going to remember that this is a mute tab. So every time you go back to the web page, you actually will not hear the audio. And this is a good, good thing because too many web pages have darn audio playing all the time and you know sometimes you don't even know where it's coming from in the page it's just you know darn um, annoying so uh, mute tab mute tab is now there to um, remove the audio um, there's an improvement if you have epub books now epub books are um, you know can be read and, and modified within edge and this was a nice feature that was added to fall careers update but one of the things they did not let you do is save the electronic publications on your PC. Well, now there's a little disk icon. You can click on it and it will actually have you save that book uh, anywhere you want, which is a very, very welcome new way of doing things. Um, of course, it doesn't work if you have DRM books. That means that they have digital right managements, but they are, uh, it is nice to have that also. A uh, new context menu for books. So if you have purchased books, you can right click. You can say remove from device. You can view and store. You can pin to start if you wish. So uh, these are new options that are interesting and available. There's a new feature. If you have more than one, now unfortunately I have only one uh, insider machine right now, so I can't really test it out. But there's a new near share uh, option. So when you are uh, on any places where you can share, basically, um, when you click, the option of near share will appear. In my case, it doesn't, but it will appear um, in that list of sharing capabilities. So it has a new icon and it is, this is one of the things that we think is going to be one of the major focus of the next version of Windows 10 Redstone 4 is the ability to share with all sorts of devices. So any devices compatible around you in the same home network will have the ability to get shared tabs, shared of all sorts of things, documents, shared, um, you know, music, videos, whatever. Uh, this is going to be more of a multimedia experience to share things around you, which is kind of nice when you think about it. Also, what do we have? Um, if you have, by the way, Bluetooth enabled also, the near share experience will can go through Bluetooth also, not just Wi-Fi, by the way. Well, the store is getting, of course, an update and we were wondering about that. Uh, what will the store uh, bring us about uh, new hardware? There was talk about it, but look at this. You can shop Surface. This is what the store is bringing us. And this, of course, is right now not within the Microsoft Store exactly uh, visible. As you see here, there's like no tabs for hardware or anything. But when you, we go to the specific URL correctly, you see that you can shop Surface, you can buy devices, mice, uh, keyboards. Right now, it seems to be only uh, Microsoft devices. I don't know if other devices will be there, but it's kind of interesting to see. In the Windows Update Improvements, so when you have apps that are updating themselves, for example, uh, you'll have a new uh, way of actually throttling the downloads of the apps. So when you look at, you know, uh, we already knew that Windows Update had 
a um, a new um, you know way of letting you see all the uh, download you know download capabilities and how much data everything is using. Um, but one of the things that uh, they are adding now is also the ability to not only see but to also monitor uh, app updates, not just um, you know the uploads and downloads of different uh, Windows uh, updates. So there's a delivery optimization coming to individual apps also. Also in the settings, we have now a new option. So if you go into your settings app and then you go into system, there's a new sound tab here on the left side. So this is interesting because it will tell it's new options that are available. You see here uh, in the microphone on the bottom, you can see when I talk that it actually has a little bar moving around. So uh, this is um, new options and of course the sound settings are moving to the settings. It's slowly creeping there. Things like that are actually uh, really working uh, out basically. Um, they've tweaked more of the ease of access tabs in this build. So uh, basically in this uh, section now there's uh, even eye control and all sorts of settings that are available that weren't available before. So here you see that there's audio stuff. They've added some new sections that weren't there in the last build. Uh, high gaze control, stuff like that. It doesn't work yet though. If you want to try to use that option, don't try it because it's not working. But it is there. Uh, what else do we have? Acrylic, of course, the Fluent Design coming to the touch keyboard. So for those that are using touch keyboard, uh, Fluent Design apparently coming to uh, the touch capabilities of uh, the uh, operating system. So if you uh, wish to uh, use a touch keyboard in some instances, it now starts to have a Fluent Design, which is very, very nice. Uh, when you think about it, you, you, you need to have all of that everywhere within the system. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, little add-ons here and there of the design of Windows 10, basically. Um, more keyboards and more options also available in the handwriting and all the, 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 the uh, these options are actually updated. Japanese input method updated with all sorts of new things. And uh, they say that uh, introducing the ability to detect suggestions while typing on a hardware keyboard. So there will be suggestions available when um, you go and take uh, notes, for example, if you uh, use a, a sticky note or whatever, there will be now a possibility to have suggestions while you're typing on your PC uh, that will, of course, try to have this work. It uh, is an opt-in feature that works for English language only right now uh, with US support, but it is a very, very interesting. Uh, if you want to enable it, you go to the settings you go into the time and language settings. So let's go here, time and language settings and region and language, region and language. And you will see uh, something called uh, suggestions. You can add suggestions now here. It uh, doesn't seem to um, really uh, give me that, um, that option available. So for some reason, uh, but you'll have, uh, you know, add display suggestions uh, if I want to add these. So uh, kind of a nice option, a little bit like a, you know your smartphone when you want to add a, a capability of um, having advanced you know suggestions of text. Uh, some little bugs, if you have an AMD computer, this build doesn't show up for you yet because there's a major bug that actually creates a green screen. But apart from that, everything seems to work pretty well and uh, haven't had uh, any, any options. There are a few little settings, including in the network and internet that might crash the settings app. So um, just be careful. This is part of things that they know that is already um, there. Uh, there's a lot of fixes in here. Of course, we had two weeks, so there's a lot of fixes. And uh, finally, there's also a known issue that is very important to know. If you switch between virtual desktops, uh, you might notice that certain uh, checkboxes 
in Win32 apps are missing. So apart from that, uh, the download went well. The install took about two hours and 30 minutes here. I've used it all the evening yesterday. Wanted to make sure that it works well. Uh, and flawless, you know, installed flawless usability. Really working very, very well uh, from what I see here. And uh, no weird bugs or crashes in my case. And of course, we'll talk more about this later today in the uh, Windows Insider Hour at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Hope you can join us on this live show. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.